Hello, this is Andrew Thake from Minds and Money. Delighted to be joined today by Doug Cavey, who is Vice President of Corporate Development with Defiant Silver. Delighted to have you with us today, Doug. Thank you, Andrew. Likewise, looking forward to connecting with you guys. Well, perhaps I can just uh, start off by asking, some of our viewers might not be uh, familiar with Defiant Silver. Can you give us a little bit of uh, overview about your company? Certainly. Defiance is a Mexico-focused um, exploration and development company. We have two standalone assets, one in Zacatecas State, just outside of Zacatecas Silver, or Zacatecas uh, Mining District, which is one of the uh, world's most important silver mining jurisdictions in the world, part of a trend of mineralization that hosts some of the world's largest tier one silver uh, and uh, gold mining camps. Um, and we have another project located in Michoacan State, Mexico. It's called Tapal, and that's a large uh, gold copper system with 1.8 million ounces of gold and uh, 813 million pounds of copper uh, measured and indicated. And what's the infrastructure like at both of those sites? Uh, infrastructure is fantastic in Zacatecas. It's uh, part of a mining camp that's been in production for more than 500 years. And the uh, we have paved roads to the property with power on site. There's permitted mines and milling facilities. Uh, we're right next door to Capstone's Cozumine Mine, which is a large underground currently operating mine, about 25 kilometers or 30 kilometers away from uh, Fresno, which is the world's largest primary silver mine. And we're in a trend of mines that are some of the world's largest asset types of those mines. So you could not get better infrastructure. You could jump on a plane right now, flying from the UK, land somewhere, Mexico City, and be at an international airport in Zacatecas and on site in 20 minutes. So it uh, doesn't get much better than that. Uh, Michoacan, a little bit uh, more off of the beaten path. Uh, it does have uh, road access, power to within 15 kilometers of the site. Uh, but when you do take sort of a a bigger view, it does have all of the key pieces in place to uh, to make a development decision there in terms of water access and, and um, you know, drivable access to the property, power nearby, uh, nearby shipping facilities as well. Mm -hmm. um, one thing about Defiant Silver is that you have assembled a really world-class team. Can you tell us um, a little bit about some of your key hires? Uh, certainly. So we, um, starting from the top, uh, you know, it starts with good leadership. Uh, Chris Wright at the CEO, Sherry Roberge as a CFO, uh, making sure that everybody stays, you know, on a straight line when it comes to the exploration. Uh, our exploration team combined with Orquest. Uh, so that's a, a number of us were involved with the Orco Silver team, uh, Vice President of Exploration, George Cavey, um, Director and VPX of Orco Silver. That was a large buyout in 2013, about three hours away from our Zacatecas assets. Um, uh, Jennifer Oskowski, who is our principal ge geologist, has a, a track record of working with large data, large systems, very strong scientific background. And then right down the line, Armando Vasquez, Miguel Davila, who's a well-known Mexican geoscientist. He's been on the ground on a number of huge projects. And we've just been fortunate to have a really well-rounded team with over 100 years of cumulative experience on the ground working in Mexico, but when combined with senior leadership. That's over 200 years of uh, mineral exploration, development, and capital market experience. So really good, deep set of skills that uh, we think are, are leading to some of the successes to date. Mm -hmm. um, so looking ahead to the next 12 months, what are some of the key plans and initiatives that Defiant Silver have in the pipeline? Drilling. Lots of drilling. <laughs> we, yeah, so we, um, in the past 12 months, we did a lot of strategic transactions. We put together, tightened up the land packages, put together new uh, land positions, have been building out our, our, our land position in Zacatecas, we have, like permits in place, uh, building up a strong treasury position. And uh, now that we have that going, we've been actually quite active with the drill bit. Uh, I think we've just uh, started, well, I know we've just uh, started drilling at uh, the uh, Lucita property, which we optioned for Pan American Silver. We're about 12 or 14 holes into that, just as a sort of a regional first pass screen, the whole asset that we can. And, and then we'll go back and design some detailed follow up based on the results of that. Um, we've been doing a lot of remodeling over at the Tapal asset, finding drill targets that look like they're resource expansion drill targets, which is one of the key uh, parameters for our, our next stage of uh, planning at uh, Tapal. And then, yeah, just letting the drill bit do the talking. A company's got $16 million in cash, so well financed to conduct that work and, and a lot of runway to be very flexible with our exploration work. Mm -hmm. um, is Defiant Silver undervalued at the moment? I encourage you to find a mining executive who will say no. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, certainly, I think the sector has 
the sector wide, there's a lot of pressure on the on the small cap uh, junior mining stocks. Um, at one point, we were trading with you know over 10% of our market cap in cash. So mm-hmm. I think there is certainly a lot of uh, value in what we're doing, and and uh, it's it, it can sometimes be this bright and flashy situation where the next bright and flashy thing really does captivate the investor, the the, the you know generalist investor. Um, however, we we do. We do feel that we have a very strong land position in, and the discovery potential is, is enormous given the history of the district, and the history of the camp and the regional uh, properties and, and what everybody else has been doing uh, with us, or, or sorry, what everybody's uh, been doing around us. And, uh, and we have a strong cash position in order to do that. So um, I think the downside risk is quite low and we're very well protected on that downside risk. And the upside risk is that we're drilling in one of the world's most prolific silver mining jurisdictions. And, mm-hmm. and our closest neighbors have made tier one discoveries, including Mag Silver, who will have the world's largest primary silver mine drilling right next to Fresneo. So I think our model is sound, our team is Found. Our team is driven to succeed. We have a strong cash position, excellent leadership from the top down, and and really a lot of that downside risk has been protected for the upcoming future. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to sort of like pose some potential sort of negatives. I mean, last year the price performance for silver was, I can say, disappointing or like not as good as like everyone was uh, hoping. But what is your view on um, the price of silver for this year? Do you think we're in for a year of growth or? I think that uh, it'll be nice if we could find a stable bottom, if it just sort of held its ground like most uh, precious metals commodities. Um, mm-hmm. If there was a, a little bit of confidence on the, again, the downside risk of the of that commodity space. Um, I agree with you, silver had a lackluster performance as a number of commodities did, but it's really the only one that in the last five years hasn't hit an all time high. Mm-hmm. Um, we've seen a lot of other metals in the class ha- have have done so. Uh, you know, consumer demand for silver is is projected to be quite high this year, and there's not a lot of silver being produced or coming online. Um, silver as a byproduct can often co- you know overshadow the uh, the uh, the the need for these primary silver deposits. But these primary silver deposits are high margin operations, so um, they are diamonds in the rough when you find them. Um, however, I I do feel that. We are in a growth period for the <laughs> commodity space, particularly the precious metal space. Um, and silver, I think, has a bright future as well. And we are seeing a bit of a trade on it in the last uh, in the last couple of months here. So hopefully that keeps moving forward, and and we'll um, we'll see a, a period of growth for the silver uh, mm-hmm. for the silver commodity space. And you know, projected demand for consumption or consumer demand for that is is high. And of course, you've also got the other sort of advantage ahead of other um, ahead of many other precious metals is, of course, silver's role in electrification as well. Absolutely, it's a role into electrification. It's a uh, it's got it's got a large industrial component as a as a as an asset. It uses a tremendous amount of of, uh, of its consumption is for the industrial um, industrial usage, industrial consumption like electrification. Now, on the flip side to that, we also have a project with 813 million pounds of copper. So we have a pretty good diverse base, and, and that copper asset has 1.8 million ounces of gold. So a lot of uh, exposure to the various commodities, whether it's as a precious metal or it's a base metal or electrification. Um, and, and I think that is you know a pillar for the downside of the company. Um, Rick Rule, who I'll be interviewing in a few weeks' time, his always favorite question to ask mining companies is, how much skin do you have in the game? So how much how much of the company does the management own? Uh, so the CEO is a uh, uh, founder of a fund called Windermere Capital. They own 21% of the company, mm-hmm. and uh, they are the largest shareholders. Uh, management insider, key shareholders, over 41% of the company. Um, hmm. All of us in the in in the insiders have been buying as a as a declarable insider have been buying. You can check the SETI filings, and uh, as much as we can, we'd like to own as much of it as possible. So yes, we have lots of skin in the game, uh, right from the top down, where our CEO is the largest shareholder. Well, we too at uh, Minds of Money always like to have management teams that have skin in the game as well. So really, thank you very much for the update today, Doug. We do wish you all the best for the rest of 2022 and look forward to seeing you at uh, future events. That was Andrew Thake from Minds of Money with Doug Cavey, Vice President, Corporate Development at Defiant Silver. Thank you very much for your time, Doug. Likewise, thank you very much.